Good morning and welcome everyone. I am Jatin Verma. So guys, here's the daily news analysis from the Hindu newspaper for UPSC Civil Services Exam Aspirants for 13th of November 2019. So we are going to see the important news articles uh, that are there in the Hindu newspaper for today for UPSC Civil Services Exam Aspirants in a topic based manner. First of all, this is the question based on the yesterday's current affairs. in the index of eight core industries which one of the following is given the highest weight so this answer you have to tell which one out of the following is given the highest weight this question keeps on repeating itself after every four or five years now one more thing uh, many of you are not aware that i did the analysis of the hindu yesterday as well to kal team ne an academy team ne ise upload nahi kiya shayad kisi karan se और या फिर अपलोड करके बाद में प्राइवेट हो गया था ये वीडियो तो आप लोग इसे देख सकते हैं और आई हैव रिक्वेस्टेड देम टू क्रिएट अ प्लेलिस्ट फॉर दिस डीएनए वीडियोस सो दैट इट मेक्स इट कन्वीनियंट फॉर यू गाइस टू एक्सेस ऑल दिस वीडियोस इन अ सिंगल प्लेलिस्ट नाउ कमिंग हियर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज दैज गॉट दाइएस्ट वेट इन दिस अदरवाइज दाइएस्ट वेट इज अ पेट्रोलियम रिफाइनरी प्रोडक्शन नाउ दीज आर दी इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स महाराष्ट्र में क्या चल रहा है महाराष्ट्र प्लेस्ड अंडर प्रेजिडेंट्स रूल so we are going to talk about this issue politicization of governor's office article 356 etc sarkariya commission panchi commission all these things we are going to touch upon first of all let's begin with this new news quickly without much ado president approved a proclamation imposing president's rule in maharashtra following a recommendation from the maharashtra governor so प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने कल कैबिनेट की मीटिंग करी कैबिनेट मीटिंग में ये डिसाइड किया गया कि महाराष्ट्र में देर इज नो पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ फॉर्मिंग दी गवर्नमेंट सबसे पहले ये केस देखते हैं कि जब कभी फ्रैक्चर्ड वर्डिक्ट रहता है किसी असेंबली में लाइक इन दिस केस नो क्लियर मेजोरिटी इज देयर इन फेवर ऑफ एनी पोलिटिकल पार्टी आउट ऑफ टू एटी एट सीट ऑफ एम एल एज फॉर मेजोरिटी अ पोलिटिकल पार्टी सिंगल लार्जेस्ट पार्टी नीड्स at least 145 seats which in this case 2019 elections outcome no political party is having the majority right so that warrants the need for coalition ab agar coalition banana padega to hame ye dekhna hai ki kis sequence mein jo hai invite kiya jaye political parties ko if we see pehle ka jo number game chal raha tha congress aur nationalist congress party they have been in coalition in the past as well congress ncp government was there earlier as well now pehle dekha gaya ki nda ka jo ye group hai bjp shiv sena they have also been in the government but kya hua hai ki shiv sena mein ab shiv sena ka ye dream hai ki they want to have the chief ministers post so that is why shiv sena ke jo 56 mlas hain they are threatening to switch sides they want to they want congress and ncp to give them the chief ministers posting here chief ministers post that is why they are switching sides from bjp towards shiv sena otherwise the game of numbers is quite clear that 161 is more than 50% of seats in maharashtra but because of the switching of sides pre poll alliance shiv sena is switching from bjp to congress so that is why the game has been complicated a pre poll alliance first of all governor should uh, invite the pre poll alliance of parties in the state if in case no political party secures the majority second chance should be given to single largest party with the support of outside mlas that means single largest party if bjp gets the support of outside mlas and others or other coalition parties then bjp is the single largest party if the governor is not able to uh, see the government uh, getting formed through pre poll alliance then government should uh, then the governor should try this option if second option does not work which in maharashtra's case is happening then the governor should try the third option invite a post poll alliance of parties after the election alliance of parties that means it would be after the alliance would be congress ncp plus shiv sena or others but agar hum other mlas ko mila bhi dein then also the number 145 seems to be elusive 108 mein 29 plus kar bhi dein tab bhi 145 nahi banega to ab aise case mein kiya kya jaye right to ye problem aa jati hai now 
if this option is ruled out then governor should invite the post poll alliance of parties with some becoming a part of government coalition of parties hai yahan pe here we are talking about coalition of parties here we are talking about outside supports outside supporters that means the mlas would not be joining the government but they would be supporting the government to achieve this number 145 that is also not seen to be happening now having given sufficient time to the political parties to explore the possibility of forming the government finally governor after 10 15 days of lok jam has imposed has suggested the president to impose president's rule in the state and that is what has been that is what has been done now so this scheme of options was suggested by sarkaria commission in its report uh, sarkaria commission had suggested that governor would be expected to go as per an order of preferences so this is the order of preferences set out in the sarkaria commission recommendations and same scheme same order of preference was suggested by panchi commission on center state relations because of uh, because of the reason that this leads to politicization of governor's office and political use of article 356 that is why it was suggested that this scheme should be followed here right the assembly will be kept under suspended animation the decision comes a day after the uh, governor invited the third largest party in the assembly to explore the possibility of forming a government in the state political parties are blaming each other ncp was questioning why did the governor give 48 hours time period to bjp and only 24 hours time to congress and ncp why B governor is supporting the bjp that was the question but nobody is asking the question why did ncp not form the government with congress why did uh, shiv sena uh, you know shiv sena is also questioning this but nobody is asking why is shiv sena dissociating from bjp right so political parties every political party is exploring the possibility of having a chief chief ministers having the chief ministers post or the deputy chief ministers post this leads to politicization of the governor's position now there is no doubt that governor's position is being uh, uh, used here but the point is that this is what has been done in the past also uh, this time around it is being done by bjp last time it was congress congress has also misused the government's governor's position and article 356 for the same reasons right so now we need to depoliticize the governor's position here so how to do it how to go about it what happens if any of these parties is invited to form the government once any formation of political parties is sworn in it will need to pass the floor test which will reveal whether the executive enjoys the confidence whether the chief minister leader of the majority party or majority coalition of parties whether he has the confidence of majority of mlas 50% plus one additional mla as mandated by the constitution in the floor test chief minister will have to pass the floor test the person sworn in as the chief minister has to prove that he she enjoys the confidence if the confidence motion fails the chief minister has to resign if more than one person states the claim to form the government and the majority is not clear the governor has the power to call a special session to assess who has the majority to check who has got the majority the date for the floor test is decided by the governor in consultation with the new government right now article 356 of the constitution provides for the imposition of president's rule in a state in case of failure of the constitutional machinery in the state as per the constitutional requirement it can be imposed in cases where the president on the receipt of or on the receipt of report from the governor of the state or otherwise is satisfied the president's satisfaction is important here we have seen so many states first of all tamil nadu after the demise of the great leader j j lalita then we see we saw it in goa then karnataka then uttarakhand then manipur almost every state almost every state which has gone to elections in the recent past barring a few exceptions has been a victim of poaching away of mlas misuse of governor's position article 356 so that is why we need to 
institutionalize this mechanism we need to reform the governor's position we need to our political system needs to respect the coalition three big questions are raised in uh, because of these kind of controversies number one governor's role politicization of governor's office right then second thing is the uh, order of precedence needs to be observed order of precedence or order of preference sorry order of preference in which the parties should be given the chance so this this thing then third thing is misuse or use of article 356 for these purposes because in Uttarakhand also Uttarakhand High Court had overruled the invocation of article 356 president's rule for this purpose right so which of the following is not a likely consequence when a party is called upon by the governor to form the government if the confidence motion fails the chief minister has to resign b if more than one person stakes the claim to form the government and the majority is not clear there will be a re-election the date for the flow test is decided by the governor in consultation with the new government none of the above are the consequences so you have to answer this in the comment section right president's rule must have legitimate basis supreme court had ruled in 1994 sr bomai case that any recommendation by a governor for the president's rule in a state under article 356 clause 1 of the constitution should be based on objective material and not on a political whim or fancy right such objective material may be available in the report sent to the president by the governor once such material is shown to exist the satisfaction of the president based on the material is not open to question now later later on the proclamation of president's rule the supreme court said is open to challenge if there is no supporting objective material so that means what advice was given by the governor to president under article 356 clause 1 is open to question judicial review and then of if based on the opinion of the or if based on the report of the governor if the president is deciding something the decision of president to uh, invoke article 356 is also open to judicial review the article requires that president has to be satisfied that the situation in the question arises the situation in the question has a reason whereby article 356 should be applied on a state hence the material in question has to be such so material kuch aisa hona chahiye jisse ki vishwas hota ho ki yes ki a reasonable person would come to the conclusion in the question in other words president has to be convinced and remember guys here we are talking about president article 74 president is bound by the aid and aid and advice of council of ministers here the court had stated that although the sufficiency or otherwise of the material cannot be questioned the legitimacy of interfere inference the legitimacy of inference drawn from such a material is certainly open to judicial review kya wo material jo hai wo bunyad hai ya wo baseless hai ki legitimacy kya usse aap dharana nikalte ho kya assume karte ho inference kya hai kya hai governor ki report se ye bhi judicial review mein yani ki cabinet ka decision hoga cabinet headed by prime minister will advise the pre president to use article 356 or not okay so it is ultimately the prime minister's council of ministers or cabinet which decides this okay the proclamation by president under article 356 on the advice aid and advice of council of ministers right so this was there so what is the significance of this sr bomai judgment this case became one of the most cited uh, cases when the hung assemblies were returned and parties scrambled to form a government. The case put an end to arbitrary dismissal of the state governments by a hostile central government. Right? Uh, after the uh, end of one party era rule, one party rule era, uh, Congress, was, uh, Congress lost election in many states. So they had suspended the uh, state legislative assemblies on the grounds that political the ideology of the central government was different from the ideology of the state government the so supreme court said that these kind of things are not allowed okay a difference of ideology between the party ruling at the center and the party ruling at the state 
shall shall not be the ground for dismissal of the government now the verdict ruled that the floor of the assembly is the only forum that should test the majority both the houses of the parliament disapprove or do not approve the proclamation so proclamation of emergency is also there right now coming here sc to rule today on bringing the chief justice under rti we have seen allegations of sexual harassment against one of the cjis in the recent past okay we have seen the allegations of disproportionate assets against cji kg balakrishnan in 2010 we have seen these type of allegations former cji deepak mishra college bribery case was there so judiciary which is the torch bearer of transparency today in our country is itself not under rti act totally uh, fully as it as the case should be so the constitution bench of the supreme court is scheduled to pronounce its verdict on whether the office of cji should be brought under the ambit of right to information act so we will study why do we need this because of the reason that judiciary is the last resort of justice if there are allegations or if there is opaqueness in the functioning of judiciary people would not be able to trust any organization then second thing is the way the functions the administrative side of institution of cji is functioning today master of the roster how the cases are allocated then third point is we have got some objections or some doubts about the efficacy of the appointment of judges okay it has remained in question since 2015 when the njac act was repealed so how the judges are selected for being appointed right so what were the a uh, pieces of advice given by four senior most judges plus one cji right all this needs clarity then the on the personal side since they are holding the important position in our country judges and cji so their personal assets their property details are also required if the property details of ias officers and ips officers are required to be uploaded on the websites of ministries why not the information about cji's assets whether his assets are increasing after uh, retirement or after being appointed as cji that should be a matter of scrutiny for the people so cji of india ranjan gogoi justice sa bobde and others and ashok bhushan have listed their assets in the supreme court website right so some of them have voluntarily done, done that declaration of assets by a judge as of now is a voluntary act towards transparency so it should be a compulsory act now okay now five judge constitution bench set to pronounce the judgment in case uh, is led by cji ranjan gogoi now in 2009 a single judge bench of the delhi high court had declared the cji's office as a as having a duty to disclose the details of personal assets of other supreme court judges so delhi high court had given this judgment but this judgment was challenged in the supreme court and the delhi high court had observed that a judge whose decisions could impact people's life people's lives property properties liberties and individual freedoms and judge who interprets the duties and limitations placed upon the state and non state agencies has an obligation to disclose his or her personal assets to someone or to some authority right so a three judge bench of delhi high court sitting in appeal had upheld the sitting uh, single judge bench judgment of delhi high court consequently supreme court central public information officer had moved the supreme court contending that the disclosure of, disclosure of its judges personal details under rti would affect their judicial independence so this is the char- this is the contention on the basis of which supreme court's administrative side has moved the supreme court itself they want that assets details of the judges should not be disclosed the case stems from an rti request made by activist subhash chandra agrawal in the supreme court for the complete correspondence between the collegium and the government for the complete transaction of business how the what judges advi- names were suggested for being elevated to supreme court or for being transferred from one high court to an other now the five judge bench led by cji had heard and reserved the appeal in april 2019 so he said that nobody wants a system of opaqueness but so 
so ifs and buts are coming in okay but in the name of transparency the judge said we cannot destroy the institution of judiciary how the name of trans how the transparency is going to destroy the institution of judiciary is beyond my understanding transparency is going to otherwise the judges are talking about installation of cctv cameras in the court rooms court complexes in the while the judge the hearing or the case is proceeding in the court opaqueness has got no place in 21st century this is what supreme court itself has upheld in various cases but when the when it the matter comes to cji or supreme court itself they are the buck stops right so th that is the point here now the declaration consider the following statements declaration of assets by a judge is mandatory act towards transparency so these type of questions are increasingly being asked from what i call as governance the day to day reading of newspaper or understanding of issues right so governance type of prelims questions are increasingly being asked from the polity section now coming here declaration of assets by a judge is a voluntary act towards uh, transparency right so this is there now coming here just this rajwana gets reprieve from the death penalty so this person was uh, sentenced to death balwan singh rajwana convicted for the assassination of the former chief minister of bihar singh the ruling that he was then the chief minister and he was assassinated with a bomb blast outside punjab secretariat in chandigarh so ministry of home affairs took an in principle decision on september 30 to commute the sentence as a humanitarian gesture ahead of 550th birth anniversary celebrations of guru nanak dev ji the founder of sikhism based on the replies received by the center the president can commute the death sentence under article 72 ministry of home affairs also decided to release eight other prisoners convicted for life for their involvement in sikh militancy as a token of goodwill the supreme court judgment on pardoning power maru ram versus union of india the name uh, is quite important and since we are talking about death penalty the name facilitates the memorization right so this is maru ram 1980 case article 72 the pardoning power of the president is to be exercised on the advice of the central and state governments right so this is not an independent power of the president of india then ranga billa case 1981 the petitioner challenged the rejection of rejection of the mercy petition by the president without citing a reason so that means the petitioner here was asking for a reason on the basis of which the mercy petition has been rejected supreme court dis dismissed this petition and held that word mercy it in itself signifies its discretionary nature that means if you are asking for a mercy petition then you cannot ask for the reasons for its reject rejection or its acceptance then swaran singh versus state of up 1998 supreme court interfered with the governor governor's power governor had granted mercy to a person convicted under charges of murder the supreme court held that the order passed under article 161 is absolute but if such power has been exercised arbitrarily if it, or with a malafide intention or in absolute disregard of the final canons of constitutionalism then the order cannot be granted and should be scrutinized by the court so that means judicial review of this power is also there judiciary would review the decision of the governor or the president if the intention seems to be purely malafide then ipuru sudhakar and uh, others versus government of andhra pradesh 2006 case it was held in this case that a limited judicial review of the exercise of pardoning power is available to supreme court and pardoning the grant can be and pardoning grant can be challenged if it is done with the malafide order or irrelevant considerations or the order suffering from arbitrariness यानी कि मनमाना अगर ये कदम लगेगा कि मनमाने तरीके से किसी को पावर किसी की ये माफ करी गई है तो इट कैन बी क्वेश्चन राइट तो यूएसए द प्रेसिडेंट कैन ग्रांट पार्डन इफ यू सी द ट्रेंड ओवर द वर्ल्ड ओके तो प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यूएसए कैन ग्रांट द पार्डन इन डेथ सेंटेंस एक्सेप्ट इन केसेस ऑफ इम्पीचमेंट अनलाइक इंडियन प्रेजिडेंट द अमेरिकन प्रेजिडेंट हैज द एप्सोल्यूट पावर दैट मीन्स 
such power cannot be questioned or blocked by the court or the congress that is the parliamentary wing of usa there is no question of any judicial review there then france pardon and act of clemency are granted by the president of france who has the sole discretion and power in non questionable uh, is non questionable and absolute then germany then pakistan also germany the german president has pardon power has pardoning power which he can transfer to someone else such as chancellor or the minister of the justice now in pakistan constitution accords pakistan with an absolute power to grant pardon reprieve respite remit or suspend so this is similar to indian thing only right now coming here article 72 the question that has been asked in the past the article 72 empowers the president to grant pardon to persons who have been tried and convicted of any offense in all the cases where the punishment or sentence for an offense against a union law punishment or a sentence is by a court martial punishment is a death sentence or all of the above please answer these type of questions now india's cancer care facility is highly inadequate a parliamentary standing committee report parliamentary standing committee on science and technology and environment was constituted to examine an expanded role for the department of atomic energy through the tata memorial center to address india's rising cancer burden so this is the advice now the committee led by former union environment minister jairam ramesh submitted its report to rajya sabha chairperson what the report says india's cancer care infrastructure is highly inadequate and it forces a majority of the patients to travel thousands of kilometers for treatment the systematic failure to address the needs of the patients it contributes to a 20% higher mortality among the indian cancer patients than in the countries with a high human development index the incidence or the number of newly diagnosed cases of cancer annually is about 16 lakh the disease kills 8 lakh people annually now coming here distribution among men and women so males oral cavity cancer 1 lakh 36 1 lakh 38000 largely because of tobacco pan masala etc cigarette cancer of pharynx 90000 cases then gastrointestinal tract 2 lakh then 1 lakh 40 in females 1 lakh 40000 fresh cases of breast cancer then 1 lakh cases of cervical cancer 45000 cases of oral cancer mortality to incidence ratio of 0.68 in india is higher than that in the very high human development index mortality to incidence ratio that means incidence of if a person is suffering from cancer cancer incidence is already there then mortality ratio is quite high that means we in india are not able to save our people who are suffering from cancer that means what factors can you identify cost of treatment and the uh, lack of facilities there in here in india all these things are lacking in india people like yuvraj singh they can go to usa for chemotherapy etc okay but the people uh, the ordinary citizens they have to manage with the relatives have to manage with seeing their patient grappling with the pain in cancer right so government needs to do something about this countries uh, hdi countries ka jo isme uh, incidence rate ka uh, mortality to incident ratio hai incidence ratio hai, that is 0.38 and the high hdi countries mein it is 0.57 right so india mein it is quite high as you can see now coming here the incidence of cancer is very high in all northeastern states as it is higher than the national average northeastern states what region what reasons would you identify for high incidence of cancer in northeastern states you can cite your reasons in the comment section showing a consistency consistently rising trend over the past few decades india's cancer burden is expected to increase from an estimated 13 lakh cases in 2018 to about 17 lakh in 2035 and cancer deaths are expected to rise from 8.8 lakh in 2018 to 13 lakh in 2035 so while the tmc is a major a uh, referral center for cancer treatment india's national can cancer grid is the bulwark of cancer treatment in the country two thirds of the india's cancer patients were treated in private sector and this forced 
6 crore Indians below the poverty line. What we dread today is not the right to property, not the increasing inflation. What we dread today is not even the police functionaries as we earlier used to because of the increasing knowledge about or awareness about fundamental rights. What we dread is encountering these diseases, cancer, etc. Okay, so everybody dreads. Even if a person from upper middle class would dread because these type of diseases, they would they they uh, there is a danger that they would take you below the poverty line over and above the uh, family pain that you would have to that a family would have to face in these type of cases right the committee submitted its report in 45 days this is a record time for parliamentary standing committee it recommended a hub and spoke model proposed by tmc tata memorial uh, center so to better reach out to cancer patients nationally now coming here Pneumonia and diarrhea still a big threat. The 10th pneumonia and diarrhea progress report card has found that health systems are falling short of ensuring the world's most vulnerable children access to prevention and treatment services in 23 countries that together account for 75% of the global pneumonia and diarrhea deaths in children under 5. 23 countries in together that together account for 75%. India, which is a home to a large population of under 5 children, accounts for a major portion of these deaths. Then rollout of rotavirus vaccines, the steps taken by the government we are talking about. Beginning in 2016 and the uh, pneumococcal uh, conjugate vaccine beginning in 2017 helped India's scores improve. India's exclusive breastfeeding rate, exclusive bre breastfeeding in the first few hours after the birth at 55% is among the highest of the 23 countries which together account for 75% of the burden. However, the proportion of children receiving important treatments as with many other countries remains below targets in India as well. Half of the children with diarrhea receive ORS, oral rehydration solution and 20% receive zinc supplementation to help protect against uh, and prevent and treat pneumonia and diarrhea. So this is the report risk factors child wasting outdoor air pollution indoor air pollution right so child wasting is the number one cause then your outdoor air pollution the second important cause this report analyzed how effectively countries are de uh, delivering 10 key interventions including breastfeeding vaccination access to care use of antibiotics ORS and zinc supplementation. Additional reports from the organizations like Save the Children and UNICEF have noted that in 2017 the highest risk factors for child pneumonia deaths in India were 53% caused by child wasting, 27% by outdoor air pollution and 22% caused by indoor air pollution from solid fuel. The global community must increase the investment and support countries in developing smart sustainable strategies that close the gaps and accelerate the progress. Globally, pneumonia and diarrhea led to nearly one of every four deaths. That means 25% of burden of deaths falls on pneumonia in children under five years of age. So this is there, right? So now 1,20,000 children, 1,27,000 children under five in 2018. That means more than 14 children every hour. 14% of deaths in India were due to pneumonia in 2017. It was the second biggest killer of children under 5. Right, so 53% we have uh, studied this data. But the target is 7% average annual rate of reduction in pneumonia mortality between 2000 to 2018. This was the target. 7% average annual reduction between these years. At the same rate, India is expected to reach the 2025 Global Action Plan for Pneumonia and Diarrhea Target in 2026. So these things are required to be memorized, especially in the light of this report now. 10th Pneumonia Diarrhea Progress Report Card. Now, Chhattisgarh moves law to protect journalists. A committee headed by former Supreme Court judge has sought public comments on the draft bill for Chhattisgarh to safeguard the media persons in Chhattisgarh from harassment, intimidation and violence. 
The committee was set up by the Chhattisgarh government in March to draft a law to foster an atmosphere where the journalists could be could perform their work fearlessly. The state government said uh, so in a statement. The draft Chhattisgarh Protection of Media Persons Act proposes that within 30 days of enactment of the law, the government shall constitute a committee for the protection of media persons to deal with the complaints of harassment, intimidation or violence or unfair prosecution and arrest media persons. So, this is the fulcrum of transparency agenda that we need to complete. If we do not complete this entire circle, we are leaving our journalists or whistleblowers for martyrdom. Okay. That means, unko marne ke liye hum jungle mein chhod rahe akela. If somebody files an RTI application, if suppose I file an RTI application, I am likely to face some threat. If I am filing an RTI application against a political big wig or against uh, 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 liquor, liquor mafia or sand mafia or something like that, I am likely to face a threat to my life. So for that, I need some guarantee, I need some kind of an assurance that I would not face the similar consequences as M.M. Kalbergi or Gauri Lankesh and many other in the recent past. So constitutional guarantee of right to freedom of speech and expression, Article 19, Clause 1, Sub Clause A. Constitutional guarantee is there in our constitution, but there is no mechanism to enforce this constitutional guarantee except going to courts. You can go to court after fate a comply, after the uh, incident or death has already happened, right? So then we need, as a second thing, third thing, we need a protection of whistleblowers act. So here the Chhattisgarh government is do, trying to complete this fulcrum. So protection of whistleblowers act. Now these type of cases, as per the incidences that have been faced uh, against CBI and other bodies, what happens is, CBI, we don't trust CBI. We, uh, because of the uh, misuse of CBI in the recent past. So, CBI thing, instead of CBI, we need an independent and impartial institution. Lokpal for the center and Lok Ayuktas for the states. Otherwise, what happens is, the if these type of institutions are not there, even if there is a protection of whistleblowers act, there is no guarantee that the uh, whistleblowers or the media persons seeking crucial important information about the governmental affairs or disclosing the uh, revelations about Rafael deal etc would be victimized right important deals uh, mis, uh, you know misgovernance or corruption etc etc they would be victimized either in the form of threats to their life as was seen in Vyapam scam case also and in many other cases in the recent past. So we need to complete this fulcrum of transparency agenda. You can uh, take a screenshot of this diagram for your exam purpose. Now, World Press Freedom Index. In the light of this news article, it, it would be pertinent, it would be proper if we go through this World Press Freedom Index report 2019. India's rank has been sliding. As the rank of India is rising in ease of doing business index, our rank in World Press Freedom Index is going down. It's another thing that people like Ravish Kumar have been given Magasese award in the journalism. But if we see the overall rank of our country, earlier India was at 136 in 2017, then it came to 138 in 2018, then finally 140 in 2019. Right. So this is the rank of India. So, what are the parameters that are evaluated in this World uh, Press Freedom Index prepared by Reporters Sans Borders, Reporters Without Borders. Okay, so level of pluralism. Pluralism means the media should not be echoing the same voice. Pluralism, plurality of media, plurality of political parties, okay, different, different channels, government channels, etc. should be there. Then media independence. In India, we have got, do we have media independence? No, we have got corporatization of media in our country. Corporatization means big, big companies, private companies are controlling the media channels, be it your, any news channel that you name, okay? So I don't want myself to be featured in the news articles today. I'm not taking the names of these news channels. You all are intelligent enough to make out the, figure out what am I trying to say? 
so media independence there is a phenomena called cross holdings okay so we'll talk about these things in a special dedicated video someday environment and self censorship so self censorship this is wrong here self censorship is in india is a hoax media would censor itself this has not happened in the past the 26 11 uh, mumbai terror attack was being live telecast then later on after the reprimand from the ministry of information and broadcasting ministry of information and broadcasting ne fatkar bhi lagayi ki aap terrorists ko exact location bata rahe ho helicopter ki ki 26 11 attack ke dauran army operation kaise chal raha hai uske kuch saal ke baad agar hum dekhe pathan court attack mein dobara se media was seen to be doing the same mistake or good take right so these bites by press uh, the, you know journalists on foot the cutting edge level media persons these are the things which attract the traffic or trp ratings for the news channels but in the national interest of our country this is not good so media needs to be regulated and we need to have a state broadcaster we have got a government broadcaster called doordarshan we need to have a state broadcaster then transparency legal framework quality of infrastructure that supports the production of news and information reasons for india's downfall quickly we will go through it section 124a of ipc is used and journalists are charged with sedition yani ki desh droh ka mamla journalists pe laga diya jata hai so this is punishable by life imprisonment the killing of journalists in connection with their work so one of the reasons Uh, India's rating was downgraded by the incidents of murders of journalists. At least three of the journalists were murdered in 2017, like their names, like Gauri Lankesh, etc. Okay, then hate speech targeting journalists uh, shared and amplified on social media network. So hate speech in India, hate speech targeting journalists and shared is shared and amplified on social networks, social media networks, trolling as we call it. Now coming here. center wants states to ditch apmc for enam finance minister has said that states were being cajoled or they were they are states are being persuaded to reject the apmc uh, system in favor of pan india electronic trading portal that creates a unified national market for agricultural commodities so far the center has been focused on reforming agricultural produce and marketing committees allocating funds to upgrade the upgrade them and persuading the states to adopt a model apmc act center was talking to states to dismantle the apmc system and move towards the electronic national market so what are we talking about let's quickly understand the problems that are affecting the farmers in today's india transparency in price discovery mechanism is not there if suppose this is a particular down this town would be having a grain market or mandi as we call it so this mandi is controlled by a group of commission agents there are a lot of shops commission agents all of them are having the monopoly if these are the villages where the crop is being you know harvested etc all the farmers from these villages they have to sell their produce in the apmc mandi all these farmers are registered in this apmc mandi so these commission agents who are called as arthias in the north india they would be deciding the price as per the fci norms covertly they would be deciding the prices as per uh, as because of the reason that they have got oligopoly they would exploit the farmer and these are the people who would be lending money to the farmers at very exorbitant rate of interest because of this apmc act a farmer or a zamindar from all these villages any of these villages every farmer is registered with this apmc mandi farmer cannot sell the produce outside this town a farmer of this village who is registered with this mandi he cannot sell his produce to this mandi in town b even if he is getting a better price we are talking about the towns in same state we are not going out of the state okay now how how are we trying to replace this we are trying to create a system whereby a farmer sitting in village would be able to village of punjab would be able to sell his produce not just in punjab not just in town a or town b or c or d of punjab 
but from Punjab he would be able to sell his produce in the town of Tamil Nadu as well to an exporter who would be selling it to Philippines. So this would lead to better price discovery. But this monopoly of APMC needs to be dismantled. That is what the Prime Minister has been trying to do. That is what was done in the very uh, second year of the BJP rule when e-national agricultural markets were set up in various parts of the country on pilot basis. 70 e-national agricultural markets were set up. Then another problem that affects our farmers is there are no sufficient warehouses. For that the government has done what? Farmer producer organizations, FPOs. So linking the farmers with the producers and FCI has come up with better coverage. SBI has been trying to expand the coverage of MSP and new warehouse godowns are being constructed so as to increase the life of perishable items like onions, potatoes, etc. Then collateral management. This is a kind of corollary of this one only. Collateral management means farmers they want to borrow the loans. As I told you that farmers have to uh, pay a very heavy rate of interest. Rate of interest to the informal commission agents as a means of borrowing money. So we need to have the system of warehouse receipts so that farmers who have kept their uh, produce as a collateral on the basis of that they would get a warehouse receipt through which they can borrow some money from the bank. This would uh, free the farmers from the shackles of commission agents as well. Now, one by one agriculture economics problems faced by the farmers distorted price discovery mechanism for this we are talking about enum warehouse receipt system it needs to be developed adequate warehouse storage capacity fci has brought about private entrepreneurs guarantee scheme so as to have increasing so as to have additional capacity for storage of food grains then we are trying to create farmer producer organizations as well for this particular thing now need for transparent price discovery mechanisms apmc's requires reform the reform of apmc's is required in the light of what i just explained you here okay to ensure transparent price discovery mechanism and since after the arrival of gst we have become a tax union we have become one country for the purpose of article 21 india that is bharat is a union of states but india has become a union of state not the Bharat which resides in rural areas. So these farmers, they still are confined to their own state or their own APMC Mandi. They cannot transact, they cannot sell their produce outside the APMC Mandi with which they are registered. So this is a kind of extortionary practice that is continuing since British era. Also they need to have, just because of the reason that agriculture is a state subject should not deprive the farmers of their freedom to transact. So this could as well be challenged under Article 19, Clause 1, Sub Clause G, right to carry on any profession or business or trade. This is a fundamental right, but despite that, nobody is talking about this just because the farmer is gullible, he is illiterate, extortion is going on. And government is trying its level best, but because of jurisdictional dispute like agriculture is a state subject, Farmers are not being given the rightful due to them. Also, they need to have infrastructure available for storage, collateral management and quality control assessment. What steps are being taken? NABAD is now ready to operationalize a rupees 2000 crore agriculture market infrastructure fund aimed at upgrading 585 APMCs and 10,000 Grameen agricultural markets. They may be, uh, there may be uh, special support uh, in the offering for Jammu and Kashmir's farmers. Now, over the last two months, NAFED has aided JNK's apple farmers by procuring their crop. By procuring their crop. Now, NABAD has now been asked to aid peach, to help peach, walnut, and saffron farmers as well. Now, coming here. Uh, snippets for prelims, uh, page 8. India US disaster relief exercise from today. The made in India US Joint Tri Services Humanitarian Assistance and the Disaster Relief Exercise named Tiger Triumph is scheduled on the Eastern Seaboard in November 2019. 
The harbour phase is scheduled in Vishakhapatnam from November 13 to November 16. Naval ships, uh, Jalshwa, then uh, uh, this Air Avat and then Sandhyak, MI-17 helicopters and rapid action medical team would be participating in the exercise. The US would be represented by US Navy ship uh, German town. The ex German town belongs to US Navy, right? So don't get confused that it, it belongs to Germany. Now the exercise is aimed at developing interoperability for conducting HADR operations. So uh, a survey conducted in Vyanath Wildlife Sanctuary concluded that Western Ghats is still home to a rich stock of butterflies. Then about the survey, a three-day survey was done jointly by the Forest and Wildlife Department in association with Ferns Nature Conservation Society. The survey was conducted in all the four forest ranges under the sanctuary including uh, Muthanga, then uh, Tholpeti, then Kurichayad and then Sultan Bathri forest ranges. So just try to have a glimpse of it. Now uh, Western Ghats still home to a rich stock of butterflies. These are the names of butterflies, brown onyx, common three ring, right, peacock royal and Tamil lace wing sighted at Vyanath Wildlife Sanctuary. The survey was aimed at assessing the butterfly diversity. So these butterflies will fetch you some marks, right. So just try to memorize their names to the extent possible otherwise. Now about Vyanath Wildlife Sanctuary, just go through these details as well. Take a screenshot or you can download the PDF from my website as well www.jatinvarma.org So this is the Vyarad Wildlife Sanctuary. This is the second largest wildlife park in Kerala and declared a project elephant and elephant reserves are there located in it. It is situated between the Mysore and a small town Sultan Bathri in Vyarad district of Kerala. The sanctuary is contiguous to the protected area network of Nagarhol and Bandipur of Karnataka on northeast and Muthumalai of Tamil Nadu on the southeast. So this was all in today's daily news analysis about my courses on An Academy. This Indian Polity and Governance course, many of you were waiting since long for this course to begin. This is an integrated course for prelims and mains 2020. We will be taking care of the factual details as well as the annual, the analytical details for polity and governance subject. I'll also be covering the polity and governance, current affairs like RTI, uh, transparency, etc. The things which we talked about in the daily news analysis. So you can consider joining An Academy Plus to access all my courses, Indian Economy, UPSC, etc. So this is prelims plus mains. Again, current affairs roundup 365 course. This is a very popular course by me since I've been doing the daily news analysis of the Hindu newspaper. In this course, we will be covering PIB, etc. If you have not been reading the current affairs, if you were not regular with the current affairs in the last few months uh, and you are preparing for prelims 2020, so this is the uh, important course. You can consider joining this as well. To access all these courses, you can join An Academy Plus, the link for which is pro provided in the description uh, box of this video. Use this code JATINVARMA71 to get 10% discount. Right, so this was all guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.